Creatine is a hugely popular molecule and for great reason. It is a ridiculous amount of research behind it and the benefits extend beyond muscle as we've covered before. But there is another molecule that acts like a good friend, lending a molecular hand and improving creatine's effectiveness. I'd like to explain to you why this other molecule, beta alanine, improves creatine effectiveness through mechanisms that I would wager you've never heard before. First, a reminder on creatine. It's a molecule that your body produces and supplementation is believed to help increase bodily creatine stores in most people. That matters because if we zoom into your muscle cells and take a peek inside, your muscle cells rely on three different primary energy systems to generate necessary energy for function. Since this is a shortened education, let's just focus on the two that are most active during highly intense physical activity, glycolysis and phosphocreatine. In the first 15 to 20 seconds of intense physical activity, your cells use up huge amounts of your phosphocreatine pool to generate energy. In more detailed terms, molecules of creatine and phosphate are bound together, hence the ever creative name, phosphocreatine. And when the cell requires energy, it cuts the phosphate off of the creatine molecule and generates cellular energy called ATP or adenosine triphosphate. These ATP molecules can be used by the contractile units, enzymes of your muscle cell to create force and deliver on your physical performance needs. Now, I'm sure that this is obvious to you now, but increasing available creatine molecules in the muscle cell also increases the number of phosphocreatine molecules, thereby allowing your muscle a greater reservoir of potential energy. Awesome. This likely isn't news to you if you've watched any other science channel discussing creatine. Where does beta alanine play into this, though? Well, hold on. We'll bring it in soon. We only have half the story so far. As your intense physical activity is ongoing, you exhaust your phosphocreatine stores very quickly and your muscle cells still have a demand for energy. So they depend heavily on another energy source called anaerobic glycolysis. This system delivers quick energy. Remember, that's ATP molecules. But there's an additional cost in that it produces more hydrogen ions, which determine the acidity of the cell. Essentially, the reliance on anaerobic glycolysis reduces the pH of the cell. The cell becomes more acidic. This is where beta alanine shines. Beta alanine, in combination with another amino acid called histidine, produces a molecule called carnosine. It's an active process using an enzyme. Not that that adds anything to the story, but it's a fun fact. This carnosine molecule has a chemical structure that allows it to absorb or take on hydrogen ions, which means in an inverse relationship, if hydrogen ions are removed, the pH of the cell rises again, making the cell less acidic. Okay, so at this point, you probably have some concept that acidity doesn't sound great and reducing acidity is a good thing, but where do creatine and beta alanine actually intersect? Well, before we get to that, and I promise I'm not stalling to make the video longer, a pinky promise, uh, it truly is important for you to understand what acidity does to your muscle so that we can understand why beta alanine might improve creatine effectiveness. So bear with me. There have been studies from back even in the 1970s that explain the effect of drops in pH, remember that's more acidity, on muscle force production. If we crack open one of these studies, the researchers tested a number of different muscles after exposing them to different conditions. The conditions we're most interested in though is acidity or pH. Here, the researchers are testing the percentage of maximum force generation by muscle at varying concentrations of calcium. We're not going to get into that aspect of muscle physiology though, but we are going to focus on these two columns. One is at a neutral pH, seven, and the other is in acidic conditions, a pH of 6.5. Then all we have to do is compare the numbers, and in every instance, force production was lower in the acidic condition. So this indicates greater acidity reduces muscle function. So 
the more free hydrogen ions, the worse the muscle performs. And since carnosine coming from beta alanine eliminates hydrogen ions, it makes sense that it could therefore improve muscle performance as it buffers acidity. That acidity, however, also impedes creatine from functioning. So not only does beta alanine help the muscle cell directly, it might also provide benefit to creatine. Well, what do I mean? Well, in a direct sense, according to this review, the actual contractile units, the proteins inside your muscle cells, use up mass amounts of ATP, cellular energy, and acidosis inhibits the activity of many enzymes. Enzymes are proteins that fulfill different functions in the cell, in case you didn't know. One such critical enzyme is the ATPase, which needs to interact with ATP to release energy for force generation. That occurs at the contractile units. If acidosis is present, that enzyme is slowed in its function. That also extends to many other enzymes in the cell, including cellular metabolism that generates the ATP in the first place. This is where creatine comes in again, because after you exhaust your phosphocreatine system, enzymes will begin trying to revitalize or recover that phosphocreatine system by connecting new phosphates to creatine, recreating phosphocreatine for use to generate ATP. This is mediated, fun fact, by another enzyme called creatine kinase. But as we just went over, acidosis slows this process for enzymes, and we see that evidenced in this study as well. I imagine you're seeing the connection here. So beta alanine through carnosine not only allows the contractile unit enzymes to use ATP to fuel force generation, but also allows creatine to be rephosphorylated for energy generation. So this is all well and good. We just spent a great time inside the cell understanding the relationship between beta alanine and creatine. But as with anything, mechanisms are fascinating. But an incomplete proof of effectiveness, which is why we should also look at the human studies testing beta alanine on performance. Surprisingly, it's not always effective, and that effectiveness really depends on your circumstance. I cover all of that, including a warning on beta alanine, in the next video here. Thanks for nerding out with me. Bye.